welcome to the 13 comics of Halloween. <laughs> hey there, everybody. Welcome to the special spectacular of Halloween. We're doing the 13, <laughs> the 13 comics, comics of, of Halloween. Halloween. <laughs> 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 Whatever you're supposed to do. Um, yeah, so. <laughs> we're no Vincent Price. <laughs> yeah, we're no, we definitely don't have a cool voice like Vincent Price. But uh, yeah, so the first one we're going to do in this. 13 ep- episodes we're going to do this month. Uh, we're going crazy. We're doing a bunch of little one-shots. Like 13 little mini episodes. Mini episodes, yeah. And uh, not all of them were one-shots. Some of them were number one issues and stuff of series. But we just figured we dip our toe into them, see what they're all about on top of some of the one-shots. And so this is this first uh, episode is the... Um, if you like collecting old 50s uh, Tales from the Crypt and stuff, this is actually... From, this is the first comic that's in the first volume of the Tales from the Crypt collections. So it's not actually called T- Tales from the Crypt. It's called The Crypt of Terror, and it's number 17. I don't know what happened to 1 through 16 or whatever, but <laughs> but apparently maybe it was a different comic, and I then guess. they changed it to this. And this and was then, in line with Yeah, that. and this was like the first tour stuff, and then they changed the name of it to Tales from the Crypt. So te- te- technically the first comics that were Tales from the Crypt were called The Crypt of Terror, and like we said, this is number 17. And the cover is very spooky. There's a woman walking in the night, and there's a werewolf uh, like following her, stalking her through the night. And uh, there's a newspaper that says, Werewolf Strikes Again. So it's very, very spooky. It's the sense stories. We dare you to read, and we'll dive in. <laughs> yeah. And so uh, like this is an anthology series. So there's like five or four, four or five comics for each issue. And this first issue, just the same as that. Um, so the first story of this is ridiculous, John. Yes. Uh, it is, Death Must Come. Yeah, it's called Death Must Come, and it is about two buddies who are, uh, like, one of them in this, the beginning of this comic is old, and he's like, hey, uh, like, his young friend shows up, and he's like, hey, you're, you're perfect in time. Uh, I need your help right now. And then the old man's like, but it's only been five years since the last time. And we as the audience are like, five years since what? <laughs> and then we find out that... Uh, Back, these guys are actually as old as that old man. And uh, back in the day when they were youngsters, they came up with um, a way to stay young forever. And basically, it was by cutting out gl- a gland. They don't say what gland, but yeah. I'm going to say like the pituitary gland or something of a recently, extremely recently deceased person. Yeah, of a young person, obviously. Of a young person, yeah. And as long as you like re-implant this new one, take out your old pituitary gland, put it in the new gland from the young person, you will stay young. This is the theory they have, and they try it out on the the guy who's young now still. And of course, as we saw earlier, uh, he stays young of forever. Course. But he, the problem is, it wears out. Like the the more you do it, the long like the faster it wears out. Basically, it's like it's like trying to fight age times ten every time you put it in. Yeah, the first time apparently was like twenty years before he needed it, but then he started to be like, "Oh, I've got like wrinkles starting in yeah. my fingers." He says like, "My waxes." Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> my waxes are. Ha- I'm like, what the fuck is he talking about? But apparently, they thought wax happened when you have wrinkles or something. I don't know. Yeah. And so uh, this is from the fifties, by the way. So yeah. like, this is this is pre comics code. This is like what. Uh, caused comics to get a code, you know, having scary stuff in comics or whatever. So this dude had his friend, like after 20 years, after the first operation, he comes and he sees his old man friend. He's, a, he's like in his 50s now or whatever, 40s, 50s. Uh, and he like does the operation again. They get a body. And they're like, they're getting them legit. They're not killing anybody. Yeah. I thought they were just going to kill buddy like people after a while. No, they're just like, they look at the obituaries. They're like, oh, this kid's getting buried tomorrow. We'll just go take his thing then. Yeah. And so... uh but they don't do that. They, yeah, they just they just do what you said and take it out. Like they don't kill anybody. They just take uh take it out of someone who recently died, and they keep doing it. And basically, they, like he calls them eventually, and the old man's like, "I can't even like I have the arthritis, and like I can't move my fingers." And <laughs> like, I don't care. I need yeah. you to come do this. Like, Help me! And he actually like slaps the old man. He's like, "You old fucking fool! <laughs> do what I tell you!" And he's like, "You hit me!" And it was like old man abuse. It was like. Sad. Yeah, what it was. Well, I mean, he like he gives him a heart attack. He's like, yes. When he hits him, he's like, you st- struck me, Fre- Frederick. And then like, like it's like his best friend over, like I guess it's his best friend who only sees whenever he needs an operation, though, right? What a great best friend. Yeah. So basically, he's like, I need. I well, and this is where finally he goes to killing. He's like, I need to get a pituitary gland or whatever. 
And so he calls like a messenger, like a, I guess it's like a telegram, a telegram guy. And he's like, yeah. Hey, I got a telegram for you to pick up. And he's like, all right. And he's like, hey, telegram boy here. And he like, he like ethers him. He like knocks him out. And then, uh, and then he like, he's like <laughs> going to do surgery on himself. And before he can do the surgery on himself, it ends up like, uh, he, he, he cuts open the kid and he's like, oh, no, yeah. like, we're not sure what happened. Yeah, and then, like, he starts to age too rapidly because the gland is too old inside of him, and then he just, like, dies of old age. But, like, kind of like uh, in, like, uh, Indiana Jones 3. Oh, yeah. He, he chooses just... poorly, and he, like, <laughs> grows his head. Like, he gets all, like, like, totally dried out and everything. Yeah. And the and the little twist, the reason he said no is because when he opened up the kit, the kid had had surgery and had that removed for you know, whatever reason he had it removed. Yeah. So... So he didn't he have the, it in. It was like it was like oh my appendix was about to burst and it, and it came out. <laughs> bum, bum, bum. Yeah, or like my pituitary had a growth and they took it out when I was younger. So you can't have it. So and then we get the second uh, story arc here, or the second story which is uh, called the man who was death. And um, I really like this. One. This one was actually cool. This is about and it's actually based on or the, they based a, a episode of the TV show from HBO on it. Uh, I believe it's like ish or I keep saying episode two. I think is what it is. Um, and it's it's about a guy who's like an executioner out of prison. He takes the job really seriously. Real seriously. He's like nowadays, uh, you know, murderer or like a, a, a what's what executioner. Like he's he's down with it. And like he's like interested in all different types. Like he starts going around to other prisons, being like, "Can I also be your executioner?" Yeah. Lethal injection. Like, that sounds fun. Like he's, yeah, he does the I chair. Do the gas chamber. Yeah, normally he does the chair, the electric chair. But now he wants to do the gas chamber, and then he wants to do like. Uh, like the hanging, you know, with a noose and stuff. And then, like, I think he get, doesn't he get like fired or whatever. He's like, no, he doesn't get fired. It's that he like he he's been doing these executions every day, and he comes into work one day, and they're like, no executions today. Everybody, I guess, is doing good. And so, like, all these people start getting pardoned or, or not pardoned, but they basically like not guilty, not guilty. And he's like, oh yeah, that's I don't understand. I, these people have to be guilty. I know it. I yeah. know better than the justice. So he's system. like, he's he's going to courtrooms and seeing all these like not guilty verdicts. He's like. Those fuckers, they are guilty, and I'm going to kill them. So he starts going at his way to, like, find ways to kill people after they're out of trial and found not guilty. Yeah. So he goes around, and he, like, electrifies a fence of this guy who walks around the fence who was found not guilty. He's, like, he, like, tracks that guy's movements. He's, like, hey, he always, like, walks by this fence every day. I'm going to electrify that fence, and then it's going to, like, shock him to death. So he does that. He, like... <laughs> He, basically all of them are like electrifying stuff it's like this one guy gets in the shower and like turns it on and then he like when the water hits him he gets electrified that one was horrible too because like right before he's in the shower he's like oh man i'm so glad that trial's over because i definitely didn't kill that guy i hope they find the real killer yeah yeah like, he's, he's definitely in his <laughs> yeah like like this dude does not give a fuck and so like eventually he goes and he like starts cutting electrical lines and stuff to kill people and everybody's like this is so weird like people just keep dying after they get you know found innocent, but um, like one one cop has an idea. He's like, okay, well the next person found innocent will follow them, and then when anybody tries to like hurt them, we'll like catch them. So that's what they do. Some lady was found innocent, and they like uh, follow her, and then some guy comes out and goes like, ah, and then they're like, stop you, and they catch him, and they knock him out with like the butt of their gun or whatever, yeah. and they find it's the uh, executioner, and then the twist is. Now he's going to get executed for murder. <laughs> yeah. So now he's like, ooh, not me. And he's just as like wimpy and scared as, as everybody else was. So that was a fun one. Yeah, that was fun. <laughs> and then... Uh, the then next one was weird. It wasn't scary or really creepy at all. Yeah, it was... It's called The Corpse Nobody Knew. And so like this couple check into a hotel and then like they open up like the chest of drawers or whatever to put their clothes away and a corpse falls out they're like oh my god and then they like run downstairs and what do you say happens yeah so he like he's a detective on like he's going on vacation with his wife cuz they've been busy and they go downstairs he's like there's a dead body in my room and there's a guy there he's like oh excuse me sir i'm the hotel uh inspector detective um we definitely should go investigate <laughs> I'm the hotel this. detective <laughs> yeah i was i was like what and he's like well we'll call the police too and they call the the police up there, and they're like, "Oh yeah, well this seems pretty clear cut. Uh, the the place was robbed. There's no money in the safe, and uh, this obviously was uh, probably the the guy who was robbing it. But uh, they didn't get away. They just stashed him away because the the guy who owns the hotel he had to he had to leave real quick. Yeah, and then then they say like, 
uh, yeah, he had to leave, and I think he's on a plane or something. Yeah. And then they like find a torn up plane ticket or whatever in the trash. So it turns out. Well, no, that was the crazy. The the one part of this that made it very much a product of its time is like the most like gumshoey character in this is the wife of the detective because she like stays with the body and she's like investigating the room and she finds the the ripped up like uh in the top it's, it's, like, it's a receipt for a pic for photos oh that's what it is yeah, yeah and so she's like hmm i bet this is important she goes and develops the photos and she like brings them back and she's apparently like, they had like one hour photo development in this uh <laughs> world in the 50s i don't know i, I guess but like yeah so like the police come and they're all talk talking and he's like and the detective's like hmm this is a closed case and she's like hey hey boys I, I have this information here and they like right away are like quit quit flapping your gums sweetheart like yeah. what spin out what you go get us some some coffee yeah yeah and she's like well no here look at these photos and he's like look what I found <laughs> these photos <laughs> it's like a photo of the guy the the hotel detective like making reservations or what is it who the fuck took the photos I don't know. <laughs> Someone took the photo. Oh, was that was the owner? It had to have been. Oh yeah, I guess it had to be the owner of the hotel. Yeah, and then that's the thing is that the person in the 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 corpse is the hotel owner because right. they also find a. Some... But why would he have? My problem was like, so did he kill him after he took photos of him? I guess so. <laughs> Making reservations for like, why? Well, I don't know. The, the timeline doesn't make any sense. It, to me. I guess he, yeah, he like he figured out that he was trying to rob the place and he was gonna leave or something. Oh, okay, I got you. Okay, I I, I didn't follow the whole like that, that one was weird and it, it wasn't it wasn't scary, scary at, all. at all. So, um, and then we get like a this one I thought was cool. There's a twist to this one. It's called the Curse of the Full Moon, which is obviously the inspiration for the cover. Um, it is uh is a werewolf story, and there's these two guys, and uh. One of them always he, he, he like wakes up and he had like horrible dreams about murdering people and then when like he, they're they're like traveling all around Europe. I don't know who these two guys are. They're really good yeah, friends. They're good friends. One Europe. of them, I guess, is also a psychiatrist, and he's like, "You, we got to talk about our trip, buddy." I would say these dudes are like lovers though, because like I don't know. It seems weird that like two guys which are we're just going around Europe together. What's I, weird I don't about know, that? Buddies going Sharing around Europe, beds, whatever. You know? It was weird, but like the the main plot is like I guess. One night, like, months ago out in Europe, they were, like, in a town and they decided to go out on a trek. And, like, while they were out trekking, they, like, one guy, like, scratched himself on a plant. He's like, oh, no. Oh, yeah. That's, like, instead of getting bitten by a werewolf in this, it's, like, transferred by Wolf's Wolfsbane, Bane, the, plant. the plant. And so, like, if you get scratched by the thorns on Wolfbane, which I didn't even know. Is a thing, and then like some old guy at this party is like, "Did you know that if you get scratched by the wolf's bane, it will turn you into a werewolf?" And then like the guy's like, oh, "I got scratched by a plant," so, like you know. So he thinks he's a werewolf, and like, and he keeps thinking that because every time like he wakes up the next day, like like a dog was murdered, then a woman goes missing, and like he keeps finding like he finds like like dog hair on his clothing, and then like a bloody shoe, and. So he like keeps freaking out. So he goes to his friend and starts telling him all these little tidbits of stories of like, oh my god, I think I've been killing all these people. I'm a werewolf. Yeah, like like he keeps finding all this shit in his rooms, and like it, it happens all everywhere they go. They go to like, oh, we're going to Paris. Oh, we're going to England. No, oh, we're going to all these places. Remember that trip? I killed someone everywhere. <laughs> yeah, everywhere. And then uh, eventually it leads to uh, finally like you know on the on the news uh, or like the radio he hears like, oh, there's been another you know, missing person. And we're assuming it's this like ripper that's killing everybody. And then the guy who thinks he's a werewolf goes like, George, like I'm terrified. The the full moon. Like, I think I'm a werewolf and all this stuff. He's like, why would you think that? And he's like, because what's the other explanation? He's like, I, I, the only thing it could be is that I'm insane. And he's like, you're not insane. And, then, and you're like, not the werewolf. And you're not the werewolf. He's like, what do you mean? And he's like, I'm the werewolf. <laughs> and he like <laughs> turns and then, it's like it's weird. I don't know if he's insane though, or if he's actually the werewolf. But I think the guy that he never turns into a werewolf, so I assume he thinks he's a werewolf and he's insane. The, the like psychiatrist friend. Yeah. So like he turns and he's like, "But George, it could be someone else, someone who shared a room with you, who could be at all the same place as you were. Could've, who could yeah put all the evidence and <laughs> yeah, and then like." Uh, then he's like, yes, Ralph, I am the werewolf. I killed those people. I did it. And then he's like, and now I'm going to kill you. And that's how it ends. Yeah. But like, I didn't see it coming at all. Like, just because no, the fun. friend was just so, like, uh, like nonchalant the whole time. Like, he's just like, like, yeah, we're just hanging out in Europe or whatever. And then, like, 
I was trying to figure out, like, when is this guy going to either he's going to be a werewolf or there's going to be a werewolf that's, like, stalking that's him or something. Him. Yeah. But it was his friend. So that was interesting. So that's the first issue of Tales from the Crypt, Volume 1, uh, which is tale, uh, Crypt of Terror, number 17. So uh, <laughs> overall, what would you give this one, John? Obviously, we're grading it on kind of a curve because this is from the fifties. It's from the fifties, but it it was it was fun. I would say I enjoyed over half of them, yes. for sure. So I would probably give this one a seven. Seven. Yeah, I'm gonna give this one a six. It was perfectly readable. It was fun to see some of the old old style, you know, stuff. And there was a couple like fun twists, you know. Yeah. So uh, overall, I would say I would recommend this. I, I'm a big fan of these old horror stories. So if you guys feel inclined, check it out on Comicsology. Uh, Tales from the Crypt Volume One by Dark Horse, I think, puts it out, and um, and all the volumes for that matter. So, uh, on that note, uh, we'll see you guys later for our next on the next on the next uh, episode Halloween. Of- <laughs> what, is what is it? The Thirteen Comics of Halloween. Yeah, I will get it right eventually. <laughs> I don't know. We we came up with this like right before we started. So, <laughs> so Thirteen Comics of Halloween, and for do number two next time. All right, see you guys next one. Bye.